it's Saren from Saren's Wild World and welcome back to my channel. I've got a very nice video for you today. Um, this is Jordan De Bono. Hello! Hey! Um, so she is a PhD student from Brian Greek Fry. Um, if you don't know him then what have you been doing? I don't know. Um, so yeah, I asked you guys if you had any questions for us since we're both scientists. She's in the more mole molecular field. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Molecular evolution. Yeah. I'll let her um, pronounce the um, uh, hard <laughs> words. And uh, I'm at the other end of the spectrum, namely in ecology, so I thought it would be fun for you to, you know, ask whatever you want to know. Uh, since we're both in snakes, which is kind of special, we're lonely in this um, snake world <laughs> where, you know, we've got um, men surrounding us. Yeah. So, yeah, Jordan, what do you want to say to my people? Um, hi guys, I feel really excited to be uh, a guest appearance, I suppose, um, all the way from Australia and the Netherlands, and yeah, it was really exciting to be on the YouTube channel. So can you tell a little bit about what you do? Uh, so I'm a PhD student at the University of Queensland from Australia, and as Darren mentioned before, my supervisor is Associate Professor Brian Fry, or better known as the Venom Doctor, uh, famous for looking at Komodo dragon venom instead of, um, and breaking down those myths about their bacteria, so, or the bacteria in their saliva. So I work on a group of snakes called the Asian pit vipers and also two species of the colubridae, and I look at their characterization of their venom, so the proteins within their venom, and then hopefully looking for novel um, toxin activity and hopefully potentially put that into drug design. We'll see what happens. How awesome is that, guys? It's just <laughs> amazing. So yeah, we've got some questions that we're gonna ask to each other. Actually, you're the ones who wanted to know this kind of stuff. So yeah, um, let's just uh, go with the question. Really good questions, by the way. Yeah, thank you for asking those questions. Um, let's start off with something that we talked about a lot, actually, and that's the question, what advice would you give to young girls who want to enter mm. you know, a macho field? Uh, it's like we said, especially in the snake world, but also other fields in biology, there's just a lot of men and a lot of egos and we don't always fit into that uh, world. So what advice would you give young girls? I think just be true to yourself. If you're interested in something, just go for it. It doesn't matter what other people say or if you're intimidated, just follow your passion. I mean, we both followed our passion despite what people tell us. I mean, we're two blondes working in science. I mean, that's a big enough stereotype in itself so I think yeah if you're interested in it just go for it follow your gut and um, yeah women power <laughs> yeah I completely agree and just exactly what you said stay, stay true to yourself um, also one of the things that I learned is you can choose to be offended I mean mm. if somebody says something to you you decide if it affects you or not and um, maybe you notice when a very distant person yells at you at the street, you're like, oh, whatever. You can do the same thing with persons that are closer to you. Mm -hmm. So you decide if something affects you or not, and sometimes it's hard. Personally, we talk this, uh, about this quite a lot. We have very nice professors surrounding us. So yeah. in science, for us, up until now, it hasn't been that hard. I've one incident where I was like, hmm. But others, and other times, it's just actually been great. Um, but actually on social media, it's been hell for the both of us. I mean, the comments that we get are horrendous. Um, but like I said, you choose whether that affects you or not, yeah. I don't care. You choose, to pay, you choose to pay attention and most of the time, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So definitely, yeah, yeah. it's offend, being offended um, is it's just that's what it is. If you're offended, you're not going to die from it. So. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, yeah. So you ignore those people and you take the support and the praise from the people that mean the most to you, like your super, our supervisors. Yeah. We are very fortunate. Very um, fortunate. But our own experiences don't um, aren't reciprocated in, in every field of science. But yeah, basically, point to take home, do what makes you happy. Yes, go for it. Mm. Okay, what are we going to treat next? Okay, I think, uh, what got you interested in reptiles? Got me interested in reptiles? Well, I was born as an animal lover. Yeah. And uh, so my grandmother, she's crazy about animals and my father as well. So they, you know, brought me up, they always took me into the forest and we just looked at the animals and at ecosystems and how everything functions. But um, yeah, how I got into reptiles is actually by watching uh, television. Um, actually, the guys from Australia, Steve Irwin, when I watched his documentaries, I was like, wow, actually reptiles are also really cool animals. Mm. 
And the thing that got me was the, um, the fact that reptiles are treated differently from your dogs and your cats. And as a little girl, I could not understand it because to me they were equally as cute. And I was like, oh, what's this thing? So yeah, and then when I started to learn more about reptiles, it was just, they are so diverse. I mean, even in snakes, if you look at how they reproduce, there's so much diversity. Um, where they live, snakes mm. occur uh, pretty much everywhere besides uh, Antarctica. Um, that's just insane. There's so many cool adaptations and they're just so interesting and I want to learn more about them. And the thing that is also um, a point that got me interested is that there's a lot about snakes and reptiles in general that we don't know. Mm. We simply don't know. And that's in the venom field, but same for ecology. We don't know what ecological role species play in an ecosystem. And that's crazy because of many animals we do know. Yeah. So there's a lot to discover. Yeah. What about you? Um, I got involved with reptiles when I started in the lab that I'm in now, in Brian Fry's lab. Um, but I too, myself, am an animal lover. I grew up in the country in Australia. And every animal to me is amazing and unique in its own special way. And we can learn a lot about animals. Um, if we just take a step back and really appreciate what we have around us. But I come from a, a biology um, and evolution background, um, also really involved in conservation and things like that. And I was given the opportunity to work in Brian's uh, lab, volunteering, feeding scorpions and spiders and centipedes. And he started to show me um, the venom evolution side of things. So you can actually study these amazing weaponry systems that these organisms have. And that's how I got involved in reptiles, learning about their venom and then slowly learning more about the organism. And the more you get into it, yeah, just as Sarah said, we, we know little, little next to nothing about these yeah. beautiful, amazing animals and we can learn a lot from them. So that's how I got involved in reptiles, um, sort of a backdoor way, but I love them now. I mean, you know, I've got a snake at home and... Um, as as she's really good at handling snakes <laughs> as well. It's insane. It's really cool. Because that's also a question that people ask, like how would we feel about working with um, species uh, other than snakes that are also venomous? Mm. Do you do have some experience with that then? Yeah, so we work on um, venom evolution. So it's not just particularly snakes. We work on centipedes. Um, we work on stonefish as well. So fish also possess venom. Fang blennies um, are the only fish with a venomous bite. Um, we work on stingrays as well, um, a whole range of different jellyfish, um, yeah anything with venom we, we have access to. There was a PhD student who just graduated last year and he worked on um, the Varanus um, lizard so, That's so cool. that they're also venomous. So um, there's another PhD student within my lab she's working on bees, wasps and ants and they're also venomous so yeah it's not just snakes although snakes do have um, a soft spot in my heart, but same. Yeah, yeah. Everything. Spiders are a little bit more difficult. They're um, the t the proteins within their venom are a different molecular structure. So we work on um, we work mainly on snake venom. Um, there's another lab in the university that works mainly on spider venom. But yeah, there's cone snails as well, which are also venomous. So yeah, yeah. I think the the if you know the basics of proteins and evolution, then you can apply that to pretty much any of um, venom evolution, a uh, venom um, system, basically. And then you combine that with ecology and it makes a nice little story most of the time. And when it comes down to handling, I do think that the, the animals that you work most often with, but they they come easiest to you. Yeah. So for me, when I'm handling like scorpions or spiders, even though I love it, I'm still not as comfortable as I would be with. Yeah, them. definitely. Yeah, definitely. Spiders are I'm not scared of spiders, but they're creepy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, they are <laughs> creepy. I'm sorry, chef. I mean, maybe you're watching. He's the spider guy, and he wants. He's trying to convince me that spiders are not creepy. When um, they run at you. Yeah, that's oh. the thing. They have legs, and they've got like eight legs, so. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks. Way too much coordination. Yeah, the same for centipedes. <laughs> yes! Oh. We had a centipede in the lab one time and he was literally like this big. He was oh, massive. God. And we put him in a bee car and we fed him these uh, like crickets. And you could hear him crunching these crickets from the <laughs> other side of the lab. It was mental. 
Oh, yeah, and imagine trying to milk an animal like that. No, thank no, you. No, no, I'll leave that to the centipede experts. <laughs> the centipede people, they're probably also a certain type of person. Yeah. Okay, what's, what do we have? Some other questions. Yes, um, how do we handle stress in, you know, whatever we're doing, graduate school or, you know, during your PhD? We do have a lot of stress, but I think we are pretty much the same in how we handle it. We plan our stuff and we got our shit together. <laughs> so when I hear it's other important. yeah, I mean when I hear other students, you're like, oh god, I can't handle this, blah blah. blah. I mean, if you love something very much and you, it, it's a big part of your life, then you make it work. Yeah, you make it work. I yeah. Personally. I think stress is very individually based. Like I stress over things constantly. Um, if I wasn't stressing, then there'd be something wrong. But it's it's more how you learn to deal with stress. So okay. you you make your PhD or your studies as stressful as you want them to be, but you also put that in uh, you put that pressure on yourself. So I always put pressure on myself to, to for me to do better. So already then I'm putting extra stresses on myself. But it's also what you've got around you. So work or relationships mm -hmm. or you know, you're having that balance. Everyone talks about this lifestyle balance, and it's it's rings so true. And I've yeah. I found that out. The longer I study for, especially with PhD, it's all under your own steam, and you put in, you get, you put, you get out what you put in. So, um, yeah, I work well under stress, but it's it's very individually based. Um, although. Uh, side note, for my honours, so which is kind of like the same level of ma as masters here, which was to get into a PhD, hell, it was a huge 11 to 12 months and it was massive. Um, I made myself sick because of the amount of stress I put under my on myself, but I've learned from that. So I know mm -hmm. I know the signs and the symptoms and I know I'm not going to do that again, but I did make myself sick and it did take me a while to get back from that. But People live with this stress, these stresses every day of their life and it's not until you step back from that, that experience and you realise how stressed you were or how deep you were in that you can, um, you can change that, you can change your lifestyle. So for example, um, I only work a certain amount of hours, um, I'm, I'm in a good position because I have a scholarship so I don't have to rely on my side job to, to pay for everything. But um, some people do and it's all about that balance and sacrifices that you're willing to make. Yes, and also what you said is trying to turn stress into something positive, mm. really pushing yourself to do better. And also an important thing, at least that I've learned, is knowing when to take a step back. Yeah. Sometimes you're writing an article and it just the flow is not there, then please stop what you're doing, go have a walk in your forest or at the beach or wherever you are and come back to it later yeah. and then usually it goes so much better. Yeah, yeah, you need to clear that mind, give yourself yeah. that that um, freedom. So I have to do exercise every morning, otherwise I know that I don't, I know I'm not going to have a productive day. At seven in the morning, <laughs> this girl. It's late in Australia. <laughs> oh God, how do you do this? No, I don't exercise, but if that's something that works for you, go for it. Mm. I personally go walk my dogs and that's my thing and you know, you have that's to a find form of exercise. Yeah, you have to find something that works for you to release your stress cuz yeah. yeah. Netflix and chill is not is not um, enough of a break. No. No. You need to get out to the fresh still air. Still behind your screen and yeah, you, know, you just need to get <laughs> fresh air, it's very important. Yeah. All right.